thing I done told y'all like the reviews we're doing tonight is it's all old people movies I mean the, like these uh the da Vinci code I mean that's 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 just Indiana Jones for geriatrics yeah <laughs> I said it's, it's national treasure for older people it <laughs> national treasure is national treasure for older people <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay, fair enough. A- actually well, it's written on such a third grade level this is mm, a little bit higher and see than national that. treasure it's just it really is it's a it's a less stupid uh national treasure which is what the da Vinci code uh-huh. is and inferno Inferno and the Da Vinci Code and all those movies, they're just a less stupid national treasure and, a, and with a less crazy actor. Right. You know, like Nicolas Cage. He's in that. The shit is a, it's a more nerdy Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah. It's an Indiana Jones that don't do no shit. <laughs> just sit around and just solve shit. <laughs> Take the action out of it. Just let them solve puzzles. Does this yeah. belong in a museum? Nah, we good. <laughs> all right. <Yeah. laughs> if you just found a college professor and say, we're going to send you on an Indiana Jones Adventure. Mm. He'd be like, oh, okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he does do a lot less running than Nicolas Cage in Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah. And you know what? We, uh, and so this is what this is. is a blockbuster for people who can't really handle the pace. <laughs> you know and uh, Inferno is the latest in Dan Brown's trilogy where, well, I don't know how many books they got, but as far as the movies go, this is the third, the third. one. Mm-hmm. And this is, uh, it features Tom Hanks as Professor, was it Robert Langdon? Yeah. And... Somebody done stole some other shit out of music. <laughs> you got to get back out there and help them solve well, it. Well, to, to be fair, this this one involves a plague that could end the world. That is true. That is true. Now, like the stakes are higher this time. It, it is higher. Like usually, they just want him to get a painting back, but this time they got a dude with a billion dollars. Like you know what? I hate man. Wait, wasn't I... the last one somebody's going to create a black hole on Earth or some shit? shit I oh yeah, I, I... something with a super collider. And, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Damn. And you and McGregor trying to become Pope. Yeah, in this world, they ain't got no security guards at the science lab. <laughs> you know, everybody just steals shit and just make all these big ass colliders and and all these uh, these plagues. Somebody made a plague. A billion. Uh, this billionaire got a plague played by Ben Foster and says, "You know what? Y'all fucking fuck up the, the human race. Yeah, y'all fucking up the Earth anyway. So you know what? I'm just gonna speed up the process." And they didn't give me too many clips. So I'm gonna play the trailer for you, but we'll be back right after this with our review. It appears you're out of options. Tell me about the threat. None as Inferno. <laughs> yeah, you need to play on this option, bitch. That would be when you'd be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. They're like, damn, well played, bitch. <laughs> you know the thing. Oh, it was directed by Ron Howard? Yeah, this was directed by Ron Howard. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, oh shucks. Shit. <laughs> well, I guess you think this sucks then. <laughs> well, not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily but it's so might, it just might not be up to his standards, Ron yeah. Howard's standards. It, that, that, yeah. Mm. Well, you, you, okay. So, sound like you you a little disappointed, Martin. And I, I'm I'm disappointed too, but in certain things. And this is something that you. What's up? Uh, n- nothing. Go ahead. Okay. Well, you know what? I don't. I don't want to start anything with you right now because I know you're gonna get on me about this because lately one of the things that I've been saying that I don't like in movies is how repetitive it gets with flashbacks, and that's exactly what goes on with this. I mean, first of all, it is very repetitive. Uh, they go through it. They, this movie's two hours long and it goes through a constant loop. It goes through a cycle. You get <clears throat> Tom Hanks will go to some city. He'll try to like do some puzzle, and then some bad guy will shoot at him, and then he'll get a headache. They go to another city. He'll try to solve a puzzle. Somebody come after him, and then he'll get a headache. I'm sure he's not just like in an Italian West world. <laughs> yeah, he's like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You know, he tries to solve a puzzle, and every time he's like, oh, shit, fuck. You know, he's like getting a migraine. And it's going through this loop constantly through the movie. And, and it's annoying because most of this movie, the repetitiveness of, of, with his headaches has to do with flashbacks. That's one thing. That's one of the things that I don't like. That's why I didn't like about the that uh, the fucking uh, drunk girl on a train. Oh, girl on a train. Girl on girl on a train mm-hmm. is that most of the movie was told through flashbacks. Now you know some people don't mind that, and that's fine. Well, me, I, it bothers me. I don't mind it in in as much as in both cases uh, the people have something wrong with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's had a, a huge head trauma to where he can't even remember what's going on. So these spots where he's getting his memory back, it plays out the way a head trauma does. Yeah, I, and I got that. But when I say that they have way too many flashbacks in this, you know, I, I'm i talking about how it's so many flashbacks that even the villain is a flashback. Mm-hmm. You know, the, uh, Ben Foster at the beginning of the movie, and there's no spoiler, this is at the, you saw it, they gave it to you in the trailer. 
Like he's dead. <laughs> it's the the title screen don't even pop up before he's like, I'm out this bitch. Okay. <laughs> like, see he, yeah, he don't even want to be in this movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and it's and it's and it's funny because it's uh like I said, he's a billionaire. He's a billionaire who created a plague. And it's um it's and I almost give the movie credit for what it's doing because with him being a flashback, they could have done some other really cliche things. I mean, he's a Bond villain. Mm -hmm. You know, Ben Foster, he could have been hanging out with a cat. It's Rayshaw Ghoul. He, he, he could, yeah, you know, yeah, he could have been talking, hanging out with a cat, talking shit to Tom Hanks through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, boo ha ha, you ain't gonna stop me, you know, and all that right. kind of shit. But he's like, you know what? I know my role in this. <laughs> you know, I know I'm supposed to die at the end of this movie. It's true. We don't have any Bond movies where the villain dies in the first two minutes of the film. No, he's he no, he's like, look, I know I read this fucking script. I know I'm supposed to die at the end of this shit. Why don't just save us all some trouble? I'm just gonna exit this motherfucker right now. But you know, cool save us all some time. <laughs> well, yeah, what's that? As cool as possible. And as cool as possible, too. I'm gonna show you the bottom of my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I think of you. Yeah, wow. yeah. Just flicks them off. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look at him. He's like, kiss my tank, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got no options. I'll show you an option. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's out. He's like, save us both some time. Mm -hmm. Not this bitch. And it's, um, the, you know, that's, that's kind of cool having the villain be not present through the whole movie. It's either in flashbacks or he's talking some shit through some pre-recorded stuff. It's still cool. It's the only villain I know that... Like spins the movie doing TED talks. It's just, <laughs> you know? that's so true. That's so true. <laughs> like he ain't mad. He ain't talking shit. You know, it's not like you have thirty seconds. To, you know, it's just kind of like, like you know, the world today is overpopulated, and what I'm doing for you is a favor. I mean, think about it. You know, he actually uh -huh. looking at somebody like really think about what I'm saying here. <laughs> you know? It's gonna kill you and everybody you love. Why yeah. aren't you on board with that? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and you know, the other thing too is that it's uh. A lot of these flashbacks, man, they're there just for for special effects. It's almost like the the the, the producers and the scriptwriter and even Ron Howard. They're just kind of like, you know what? They, all they, nobody want to hear this history shit. <laughs> these dummies don't know it anyway. Just what that we're gonna put some flashbacks in there just to have special effects. Mm. You know, show somebody's feet sticking out the ground with fire well, we, coming out. We got all this money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really, if you take all the effects, that's why he's having flashbacks and headaches so they can show you because he's having. Visions of hell for no real reason. He's just hallucinating, mm. and there's visions of people. It looks like Silent Hill. People walking around with this their, Game of Thrones uh, battles uh, going on. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's some shit. Like he don't, and I don't really say anything. What it has to do with anything? It's just, it just look cool. He hasn't, he's having visions of hell. Uh -huh. You know, he people walking around with their necks turned backwards and their heads backward. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just, and it's just there, just so they like, hey, you know what? We this is what got I all this money. See. Shit, the, the shit is so dry. We got money left over. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are we gonna do with this? They 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 they're doing these flashbacks, and they're and they're doing uh you know uh, uh the move they're making the movie move a little bit faster because it wants to be an action film now more than the brainy films that it was before. Mm. Corey, you're wrong. Most of the time, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like this Negro here, man. <laughs> but you but you're absolutely right on this one. <laughs> but you do you know what I'm saying, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, man? Look. God bless you for trying to get the movie started quick, cause y'all know we stupid. We, you know, we don't want to hear this history shit. And y'all got the movie going quick. It's almost like they assume that the people who know this character and know these stories, you've seen everything. We don't have to lay out any exposition. This movie just sets up and starts running, and it's almost like it's turned into a Jason Bourne film. They even got the shaky cam going. It's a Jason Bourne slash James Bond movie. Yeah. Except you don't have Jason Bourne or James Bond in the, as the lead character. It's like a movie where Jason Bourne's the biggest pussy in the movie. Like, all right, you know, he everybody's tougher than him. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, yeah. no, no, like, cause this dude, he don't, he don't do shit. What man, you don't fight? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm smart. <laughs> yeah. And see, that would be one thing because usually that's the cool thing about Pro Professor Langdon, this character, Tom Hanks' character. It's kind of like he's like he's. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's still about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not so hard. Not so hard. You, you know, he most of the time he's always using that as an excuse, man. I'm too smart for this shit. I ain't gotta fight nobody. Mm -hmm. You know, why do I have to do that? I ain't go to college to like box somebody or fight somebody. I ain't Indiana Jones. But with this movie right here, the like he went the the, the past movies went on the strength of his puzzle solving skills. Right. They spent a lot of time with with the puzzle solving. And yeah, and, and you and you know what? You, like for the people who want a brainier action movie, you know, 
they stop and let him solve a puzzle and you can feel smart about him doing all these history things and knowing all this all about this culture and this art but here because he's got a head wound and because he's having trouble remembering, they put him in front of, in front of a pause. He's like, man, I don't know how to do this shit. <laughs> really? I, mean, I, I got a headache, man. It's not quite that. <laughs> I'm about to say, Jesus. I mean, it is like, he's like, I don't remember you. I don't know who the fuck you are. Oh, but this puzzle, I can figure this out. All right. No. This, 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 this. And, it, and it's cool with him not being an action guy because it's also the whole thing where, you know, the the he's mistaken for a criminal now. Something's yeah. been stolen. He's an ma- innocent man on the run. There's elements in there that could work. Mainly Tom Hanks. Because Tom Hanks, if, if he didn't have to struggle against this, if he wasn't struggling against this script and the pace of this movie, he'd be the Tom Hanks that we know and love. Sure. You know, because, but watching him in this, because they try to make it so much of an action-oriented film, it's like watching your dad <laughs> trying to be an action hero. Oh, you know, because, you know, if your dad was an action hero, he ain't going to do shit. You know, <laughs> My dad would just be cussing everybody out. That's, well, <laughs> uh, well, that, that's a black daddy. <laughs> yeah. Shit, God damn it. Come on, fuck, I don't know this shit. Hell, <laughs> I'm sure there's a guard in here. Like, hey, hey, you come here, boy. Come here. <laughs> you know, but it's but yeah, we, just like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know this. You know this fucking history shit. I don't know this shit. It's all this motherfucker right here. <laughs> but you know, let's say your white dad. You know, <laughs> okay. Because your white dad is he can't fight. Mm. You know, but he's gonna be polite. He ain't got no game, so he ain't trying to fuck nobody. <laughs> you know, right. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, whenever he's around a woman, he's he's cool. You know, I'm about like, to say, I see they have another uh, hot chick that's his assistant or his, you know, sidekick. There's or, no sexual tension between. No, them. no. Oh. in fact, when, <laughs> like they, they it would have been creepy if there was. Mm. Yeah, Felicity Jones plays a doctor who gets wrapped up in his in in, in his situation. Uh, Sienna Brooks, Sienna Brooks, and there's a. There's, there's even a part in the movie where he has to tell the audience, like for real. He, come, he comes into uh, uh, the museum and uh, there's a woman, oh, nice to meet you, Professor Langs. And he's like, oh, is this? And he's like, this is my niece. Like, oh, you don't oh, have to tell me that. Like, oh. <laughs> no, bitch, this is my niece. Come on, you think I'm fucking this? Yeah, oh, yeah, your niece, all right. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> he's looking at the audience like, yeah, y'all know, right? <laughs> yeah, but when somebody tell my wife, I'm not trying to fuck this girl. <laughs> and Felicity Jones, she just like, you know, I'm just, I'm just riding this out. I'm going to be in Star Wars in a minute. <laughs> <You True. know? laughs> I mean, they really are just kind of going through the motions Mm -hmm. and that's the thing about it like they know that Tom Hanks is like somebody's dad they play that shit up like in the in the first Da Vinci Code when he tried to have that hair look he don't look bad in it but the audience is almost kind of like Come on, Dad. We're trying to be cool. Cut that shit. Right. You know? <laughs> Look almost as bad as a Corey Stoll. It was at the uh, the strain. Oh yeah. 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 Well, I was gonna say everything. Yeah. <laughs> Is that y'all and y'all ain't seen Tom Hanks with no long hair since then? <laughs> y'all seen him with a beard before he had that hair again? Yeah. <laughs> he was on an island for months. He didn't have that fucking hair. He had a big ass fucking beard because mm-hmm. they know that he's dead. Shit, there's there's dudes out there seventy five years old talking about. I wish Tom Hanks was my dad. <laughs> you know, everybody everybody loves Tom Hanks and he has that every every everyday guy thing going on. Uh, but like I said, man, you know there's a there's a there's some things in here that really work, and it's too bad it's not in a better movie because with I'm talking about Tom Hanks being an older guy. He a lot of people like him probably outside of this because he's a classic actor. Sure, you know, he doesn't need to be stuffed in something, or, you know, a run and gun movie. I mean, on paper, I like the character of Robert Langdon. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm with you. Where there's so many things about this that, despite all these other problems, I still like. Uh, I mean, I didn't mind it being more of an action movie. I liked the puzzles. I I liked what these characters were about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean. To, to be straight up, I liked it. I enjoyed it more than I did the other two movies. You know what? This was the first movie where I really liked the other characters, most specifically Irfan Khan. Oh yeah, that's because I mean, that's, he like he was such a cool character. I was like, man, I just want a movie with this guy. I, that's what I said. <laughs> I want to spin off with him, Irfan. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Irfan Khan. Y'all talking about who? That fucking tiger from Jungle Book? No, you know. <laughs> no, it's a y'all seen the guy, Indian actor, more of a character actor. This is the most badass. He see, he came in and took this movie he from did. Tom he, Hanks. He stole the movie. <laughs> he looking at him, looking. Like, yeah, you're doing nothing with this. Give it yeah, to me. <laughs> that's him looking at Tom Hanks right now. I dare you to snatch this movie from me. <laughs> Got your movie, bitch. He because he comes in, he's part of a secret organization where he has clients, and he has no real allegiances to anybody. Right. So he's, he's playing the same role as he did in Jurassic World. Oh, no, 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 okay. no, no, he play, no, he plays like a, like, like a badass, almost like a, he, he is James Bond in this movie. Holy shit. He, and like, like, like a, James Bond who has his own company. Yeah. Nice. If James Bond decided to just, you know, leave, uh, what is it? my uh, 6 my 6 and just say, I'm, I'm going to go freelance. <laughs> I'll start my own business. <laughs> okay. That's what he would be. And even in the movie, like I said, he has no allegiances and I love that in the movie. Yeah. Tom, Tom Hanks even says, 
like he saves Tom Hanks in a badass way. I'm telling you, he's the best. They need a spit off of this dude. He comes in and saves Tom Hanks, and Tom Hanks is like, man, you were trying to get me killed five minutes ago. And he's like, yeah, so what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> he, is, he admits it. He's like, yeah, at that time you were a liability, but now I, I feel like, you know, he yeah. should keep you alive. He's kind of like, get the fuck out of my way next time. <laughs> With Tom Hanks being a classic actor, I tell you the, the cool thing about him being a more mature guy in this kind of film is that uh, more mature actors can get away with shit because they he's in the movie and they have this this semi romantic subplot going on where he's doing this with uh, what is that actress's name? Oh no, uh, Jesus, I re- uh, God damn it, I remember her name. She's in she's in Westworld. Yeah. Said, uh, Oh, S- Sidibe. Ba- oh, I, I, I was wondering if that was her. Okay. Yeah. S- uh, oh, that's her name. Sidse Babbitt Nutson. What? And that I know. I know that she got a black name. She's a <laughs> she's a white British woman. <laughs> that's not even. That's like Japanese sensei. What's her name? S- like Sid. Her like, name. Like her Gabbard name is Sid. Sidse Babbitt Nutson. She should be oh, like wow. an overweight black girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm precious too. <laughs> In fact, that's that is precious too. She turned to a white British woman. But her and her and uh, Tom Hanks, and she's in Westworld. Gorgeous woman, by the way. Mm-hmm. For an older woman, she's like she's really gorgeous. She just has, but she's got a maturity to her. And her and Tom Hanks got these 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 romantic lines, and that cheesy as fuck, man. That's you know that's the problem because I like you look at something like Twilight, and it's just teenagers who just end up staring all the time. Yeah, yeah. But here you have a, a mature couple who like they've had a, a entanglement in the past. Mm-hmm. There's so much there, and it's like, man, there's so much you can mine here. And when they first get together, you kind of give it that, but then they end up not really saying much. They don't, but they no, do they, say it's cheesy. You're like, man, whoever was writing this fell down on this part because like, everything was teed up for them, <laughs> and they just couldn't pull it they off. They in a doorway, and they say some of the cheesiest shit. Even Humphrey Bogart was like, I'd be goddamn <laughs> <really>? <laughs> 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 But they, they kind of get away with it because they're older, you uh-huh. know, because they're kind of classic actors. Like, I give them credit because no young people could ever say that shit well, and get of, away with it. It's the kind of dialogue that young people would think old people would say. <laughs> and guess what? They did. Can, can, I get a sam- can I get a sample of this? What did they say that was just that? You're like, wow, that's outlandish. They said, hey, Schwinn Hart. No, they said, oh, I'm about to say, Jesus, turn <laughs> the cats of black. It's so much. It's like, yeah, you know, with us, the, the timing was just never. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you had. Uh, Paris and I had Cambridge. Yeah, and- it's it, it's like well, <laughs> it really is. I I just remembered it really is. Life splits us apart again. Oh well, another time, another place. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can actually hear somebody in a restaurant just drop a glass <laughs> for real. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> We're closed. <laughs> somebody wants to throw a rock at the streets. <laughs> the now I'm not. Here's the thing. And I'm not, because Martin, y'all going to make fun of me, and I'm not saying this because I'm uh, I, my fiancé is Turkish. I'm not saying this to tell y'all how I've traveled. I have gone to Istanbul a couple of times, mm-hmm. and when you go, you begin to notice how the movies do Istanbul. Because uh-huh. <laughs> Ist- when they do that, like, in Istanbul, if you go, it's, it's modern. They, but they don't show it in the movies, not just this one in the movies, they don't show you the Foot Locker. Or the Burger King. They don't show you. They don't show you the kids hanging around in the cool bars and the clubs. Mm-hmm. No, they 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 always show you that 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 uh, that market where they got that old beggar woman from Aladdin selling people scarves. <laughs> the bazaar. <laughs> the bazaar. Yeah. <laughs> you know they always show them them ragged ass taxis going through them dusty alleys. And shit. They look like tattooing. <laughs> yeah. They, they make it like a third world country. It always opens up. It always up and up on a mosque, and they always got that man's thing. <laughs> Second world country. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't show the footlocker. They don't. I bought shoes at the footlocker in Istanbul. There is one, and then but they make that shit look like some shit like tattoo. Yeah, basically. <laughs> like that's, that, that's how we know it in America. That's a, that's how we know countries. Like they might have <laughs> aliens back there. <laughs> he doesn't like you. I don't like you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm wanted in twelve systems. <laughs> Fuck away from me. <laughs> nah, man. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but you had you noticed that, man? They don't. They make that shit look like it's, it's something out of a land. Yeah, it's nothing like the Istanbul I visited. Uh, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying. Did I bring you a pamphlet? <laughs> nah, it's uh. You know what? The movie. It's. I'm making it sound like it's bad. It's not. The only thing is that if this was. The start of a franchise, maybe, and it didn't have someone. Just like we were saying with Tom Cruise last week in the, the Jack Reacher sequel, if it didn't have 
not just an actor, but several actors of this caliber, if it didn't have a director who we would expect something better from, maybe I wouldn't hold all the complaints against it so hard. Okay. I'm giving this a, I'm giving this a rental. I'm giving it a good rental. I'm giving it a, like a, a fine, very good. You go out and when it comes out on video, purchase it, rent it. It'll be fun. But uh, as a movie, I don't think you need to rush out to it. I'm, I, I so agree with you. And yet, I liked it just a slight bit better. And I can see why. I'm not even arguing with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so close. Like, if we had something between low matinee and high rental, I'd be giving it that. <laughs> I mean, I, do you want to give it a mental? <laughs> yeah, this movie is mental. I, mean, I feel like I'm going to settle on a on a low matinee because I know, like, like, for an o- older audience, like I said, of the three movies, if this was the one that I liked the most. I didn't feel like falling asleep on it at any time. Um, you know, it 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 tried. It had enough elements going on. The thing is, yeah, it's, I'm I'm sad that Ron Howard directed it. I, I thought he only produced it because I, I my whole feeling was like a better director could take this because it's it's a Hitchcock story, and it, it, told, it it's and, north by northwest in some parts. Yeah, yeah, but like like you know, if Hitchcock was still alive, he could have made this into a classic. Probably one of the the biggest problems I had the movie that you didn't bring up hmm. is Hans Zimmer's score. His Ooh. his scoring on this movie was well, just generic. Oh, it's it's beyond generic. Yeah. I didn't even know it's Hans Zimmer, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Hans Zimmer. Oh, how did you not notice? Because you get the you get the gong early on in the movie, but the rest of it is just the sappy strings through so many scenes of dialogue. And I was like, and not not just dialogue, but other parts. Like so many times in there, I was like, man, your music is dragging this scene down. Like this could be moving, and yet you're you're setting the tone. It's just kind of you're making it syrupy. And it's like like it's it's almost like he's the one going like, well, this is for my dad and my mom, <laughs> and I know she likes this kind of music. And I'm like, fuck. Uh, it's just a studio film where everybody got a paycheck just to do their job. You know what I'm saying? Not not ins- not, not not inspired. Just do your job. You have to understand that I almost ne- like when you guys are talking about the scores on a movie. I'm like, oh really? Because I almost never notice them, and here. This score was like a person sitting next to you annoyingly eating Doritos. <laughs> well, I was like, God damn. Could you? Like, I had somebody behind me like, rattling a bag, and I looked back at him. He stopped. And I wish Hans Zimmer could have been there so I could look at him and like, yeah. you, you know what? When you looked over, it was Hans Zimmer up there. You <laughs> I mean, playing Doritos bag. I mean, there were so many scenes where I was like, this would scene would just be better with no music at all. Mm. Like, it makes he, me angry, man, that you don't recognize good music. But once you hear some bad shit, you're like, man, I heard that shit. But that's, I mean, that's the way it works. Like, some things shouldn't be noticed. Yeah. And this was like, noticeable where I was like, he is fucking this whole thing up. Damn. I like what it sounds like that brought it down to a rental, brother. <laughs> Hans Zimmer score. D- d- despite him, <laughs> he gonna watch this on mute. That's how I felt. I was like, man, was just some way I, I could use an equalizer to take out his music. I would like this better. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I uh, I would actually give this more, but uh, you know, my experience in Istanbul doesn't. Let me do. I'm just saying. <laughs> the Turkish <laughs> hipster. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, I, I used to visit Istanbul back when it was cool. Uh, you know, <laughs> back when it was Constantinople. <laughs> have, you, have you been to the football? <laughs> Gamefly brings to your house, to you, over eight thousand new releases in classics that are available to rent, or you can buy them for almost every system out there. Current and some old systems. Like I said, man, I've been trying to put my GameCube back to work for years. Gamefly is giving me an excuse to do that. And you can even try 30 days for free by typing in GameflyOffer.com forward slash double toasted. And when you do that, you, you'll get 30 days for free of games and movies. Get all those things, all of them at once. Just stay in the house. Don't go nowhere because they're all going to get brought right to your mailbox. You can also bring the element of surprise every month to your home in the form of a Loot Crate mystery box. In that box, I can't tell you what it is, but I can guarantee you it is the best in geek and gaming gear. Some people say it's like having Comic-Con brought right to your home. You don't have to leave the house for nothing. You're getting all kind of stuff. And everybody likes a little surprise every month. Just a little bit. And here's another surprise for you. You know... If you go to our link, trylootcrate.com forward slash double toasted, and you type in bridge 10, that's the word bridge in the l- number 10, you 
can get 10% off, a 10% di discount on your first crate. How's that for a surprise right there? Loot Crate, bring the mystery and the surprise to your mailbox once a month with Loot Crate. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel and go over to our home, doubletoasted.com for more videos and live streams. And remember, stay toasty.